now were you interacting with uh, guys like Mike Grell, Chaikin, Starlin around this time? Um, yeah, well, yeah, I certainly was. Uh, I, I was dealing with all those guys there because they were uh, doing the books, and uh, I'd have okay. to talk to them if, if something needed uh, adjusting or. Um, Oh, like oh, 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 Howard, Howard, you've you've forgotten to draw a uh, flag's uh, hip over here. Would you? <laughs> <laughs> For, fortunately, uh, they're generally a pretty good group. I I really enjoyed working with Howard. Howard's my hero. So. Oh, uh, that's awesome. Yeah. So, um, and we we've had him on this show. Fun guy to talk to, and um, and that's interesting that you both have the Gil Kane lineage. So when you were seeing pages from him with his American flag, which I think is is highly critically regarded as as being in a similar status as the Frank Miller Batman and Alan Moore Watchmen, that he kind of brought that serious storytelling in the 80s. Um, did you feel like you and uh, Howard had kind of a, a more of a special bond than maybe with some of the other people you'd talk to? Yeah, I think so. Um, it was certainly with the guilt. You know, Keen background and you know just the approach and uh, you know Howard came out and talked to us at at first we had real nice meetings um, with with Howard and Mike Gold and you know the whole crew when Howard was talking about what he was going to be doing with Flag mm-hmm. and, um, I I think that the name American Flag came out of one of those meetings so. mm-hmm. oh really how fun. Yeah. yeah, those were great. great comics, Joe. Uh, um, uh, um, Sable, um, the Dread Star. Those were all really fun to read. Um, why? How did it go bad? Um, basically, the company was underfunded, and uh, we never uh, were able to sell the advertising we hoped to to uh, cover the difference. And basically, that we, we were just underfunded and couldn't keep going. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So now you also did a story with uh, Marty Pascal for Eclipse's Destroyer Duck One called "Gimme My Check." <laughs> Scott Shaw did the inks. I-, I remember I made a post about this, and and there have been different renditions of this Alex Toth Julia Schwartz story of Alex not getting his check, throwing him out a window, or threatening to. Then he got fired. Um, now, looking back on that artwork, that's interesting in that the person that looks like that is that I think represents Toth kind of looks like Toth. He's got the Pierre hat, too, which is kind of funny because there's that artist personality that Toth has um, oh, kind of have that cap. Yeah. 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 That kind of difficult artist. Um, but then there is the um, the Schwartz character, which actually looks more like Robert Kaniger. It was in my that... understanding. It was Kaniger. I see. So when you did it. You thought it was actually Kaniger in that story. Is that that's, right? That's the story I was told. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. That, that's why you drew him like Kaniger, because you actually thought it was Kaniger. Okay. Um, yeah. That's cool. Yeah, because I made a post about that a couple of years back. And, uh, and uh, I, I think that that whole concept of an editor not paying the artist, the artist throwing him out the window, I feel like um, even when Jim and I have interviewed some people, they would say, oh, yeah, I think... And it was completely different editors and artists saying, oh, I think that artist threw this editor out the window when it probably didn't happen. But it's such a piece of the folklore of this comics history. Uh, what, what do you think about this story? To, you know, it, why is it so why does it resonate so much with a, with a lot of people that satire that relation between artist and editor? Well, if, if, it's, it's one of those stories. If it didn't happen, it should have. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that. Uh... The, the people with the body need to be thrown out windows occasionally. 